Hello there fellow Aklaisa Sega Saturn and this time we have something a little bit different for our Beyond the Moon Ruins of Saturn video. As you can see I have a special controller with me today. This is because the game I'm looking at is Denture de Go, a train simulator for the Sega Saturn and it uses this special little controller. If you don't have the train controller you can use a normal controller and it will work perfectly well so don't worry if you don't have it. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using it. So jumping straight into the game, the first thing that you'll see is a little picture of a controller. It will say A and C and have some Japanese underneath. If you hit A or C, it will switch and show you the train controller. Pressing it again or pressing the other button will go back. This just means choose whatever controller you're going to use. Now, of course, I want to use the train controller, so what do I do now? As you can probably guess, you press the start button to select. Once you're in the menu, as you can see, everything's in English so far, but once we go to the options, however, thankfully, the difficulty is in English. So you can see it says normal, and we can move it to say hard, we can move it to say very hard, easy, or normal. We're going to stay with normal and we're going to go down to exit. So we go into the game and we can choose original mode. So here are the four tracks available. I'm going to choose the first one for now. Start with something easy because I need to explain. So it tells you right off the bat you need to reset the left control to the top position and the right to the right position. Now the key thing in this game is that you have to visit a variety of different stations and you're targeted on getting to the station in a specific position and also a specific time. That's where the main focus of the game is, is to park at the right moment and in the right position. So we have 30 points available because this is normal mode. If you're playing easy, you get access to 40 points, but don't let that fool you. 40 points is still very little, and if you're not very good at the game, you'll run out of points very quickly. It has a limit, it continues though, so it's not a massive issue. This is explaining some things about what you need to do. It's saying that you need to move the stick on the right to the left position. Before we do that though, I'm just gonna look at our little screen. We have the points at the top which get deducted or you get bonus points. You have the time on the left which shows you the time now and the destination time. You also have at the bottom the distance to the platform and on the left you have your speed. It's deducting points right now so I'm just going to go. You move it to the left, you remove the brake, move it down, you gain speed. So we quickly gain speed as you can see. We have five different speed levels. One will gain speed slowly, five will gain fast. Again, very easy to figure out and you don't need to know any Japanese in order to understand the instructions. You'll see that the meters on the bottom as well is gradually getting closer. So again, you have an idea about just how far you need to travel in order to reach the station. By using that, you can judge the timer and you can judge your speed to gauge how fast you really need to be going. It's saying that you need to be going around 60 kilometers an hour. So once we get to 60, we're gonna bring this to zero and that means we're just cruising at 60. You have a bunch of different signals on the right as you can see just there. That would mean that we're gonna go downhill and gain a little bit of extra speed. But to be honest, a lot of these you probably are not going to know. I know nothing about train signaling, so yeah. You'll see as well that it said 70, it means that the speed limit is now 70, and I'm just saying what your maximum should be. So here we're at the station. As you can see, I've lost continue, I didn't park in time. For the next station, I'm going to do it properly and show you just about what we need to do. As I explained before, left controls the acceleration and right controls the level of brake. So I'll explain that this time. As you can see, I'm starting at zero. Well, I've got E. As you can see, I've moved that and it's gone to zero, which means there's no brake applied. If I start going at speed, you'll see I gradually build up. If I press one, I will start braking very slowly. And then, of course, as you move up to age, you start breaking faster. I'm not going to do that for the moment, I'm just going to keep on building speed. 
So let's go on our first proper route. Let's see if we can reach the destination in time. As I say, there are various signals throughout the game as well, and you probably won't know what they are but until you look at like an FAQ or a video. I'm going to link a video which is actually for a different version of the game, but still can give you some helpful tips. I'm also going to link you to a PDF document which is for the PC version of the game, which again you might be able to pick up some things from. There's no definitive guide for the Saturn version, so it's just taking bits and pieces and trying to work out what's best for you. So here we are, we're starting to get a little bit closer. So I'm going to start slowing down. Probably going a little bit too fast, so let's slow quite a fair bit. We're going to move it to 8. Now I'm going a little bit too fast, so I'm going to slow down the brake a little bit. Okay, as you can see, I'm going a little bit over. Check. So at the bottom right, you can see the line, which is the destination. We have to slow down and try to hit the line. So we hit the green line, so that's the minimum, and you have to try and stop on it if you can, but I've gone a little bit over. I went over by 5 metres, so times that by 2 and I get a 10 point penalty. Once you start going over the time, you get deducted in time for every second that passes. The game's very strict, and as you can see, I'm already at a game over. But that's pretty much the gist of it. Is the game suitable for non-Japanese speakers? I would say yes. There's the very basics on how to start and how to stop. You can pick up fairly simply. The other things like to do with the signals you may have to look into, which can make it more difficult, but it's definitely not too difficult to get a grasp of. You'll find that some of them you pick up as you play, others you might need to look into. The game is also very, very cheap, so it's something that I would say pick up, try, and try to figure out. If you want to pick up the controller, of course, that's going to cost you more. The controller is a little bit more expensive if you want to go for that, but as I say, it's also not a necessity, so don't worry too much about it. So that was Tenshi Digo. A little bit more difficult than some of the other games I've previously covered, but still not amazingly difficult. I would definitely give it my recommendation. Okay, until next time. Bye.